Welcome, Heather Lockhart, to one of the first in our series of interviews for Savvy Art Market. We are doing a series of interviewing artists that are part of the Savvy Art Market stable of artists. And we are so excited to have Heather here. She is a mixed media artist, and we're going to learn a lot more about Heather. And I'm so curious, and she's got some fabulous pieces to show us in the background. So let's get started. I'd really like to know, like, how long have you been making art? And can you tell us a bit about your process? Okay. Um, so it's a pleasure to be here with you. Um, I have been working on art for about 10 years. Um, saying that, it has been in me my whole life. Um, as a child, we weren't allowed TV. So uh, okay. I spent a lot of time drawing and stuff. When we went to um, amusement parks, I just wanted to stand and watch artists work. Um, I've always loved everything creative. But about 10 years ago, I met a friend who was telling me um, that she likes doing watercolor. And I had this little brain warp in my head. I hadn't okay. painted or anything for years. And I couldn't let the thought wouldn't leave me. It's like, I want to paint again. I want to Do paint again. Do you think again. it was like an epiphany or a, an aha moment? Like it really struck you? It did. And it wouldn't go away. And I, I hadn't painted since high school. So after high school, I got married, had kids, you work, you raise your kids and totally forgot about that part of my life. Not that I wasn't doing creative things all along, but yep. I hadn't even thought of painting again. And so I went in headstrong, everything I could do to learn, to supplies to buy, and I everything, I just couldn't eat it up fast enough. I was so excited. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, but I didn't really know at the time what I wanted to paint. And so I would scroll Google, uh, the internet, and for some reason I was drawn to abstract work, but I wasn't sure why. Um, and not all abstract work, just certain things. And so I started printing off files. And as I printed the files, one day I took them all out and laid them all out over my floor. <laughs> and I started asking myself why I like these. What do I like about these and not others? And then I noticed that I had printed a lot of the same website without even realizing it. Oh. So without realizing it, I'd honed in on a certain artist and I was like so excited. So I Googled that artist and some of her stuff isn't really my taste, but some of that I absolutely love. And everybody's entitled to their taste. For sure. And yeah. So um, I, I printed off this piece and I was studying it. I was trying to figure out, I don't understand abstract art. I, I didn't take, um, art after high school so I hadn't been educated in it um but I didn't something was drawing me to it you were really listening to your own heart right yes yes so there was a a, a title on it and it was called the last laugh mm -hmm. and I stared at this piece and stared at this piece and could not understand where that was coming from and then all of a sudden I realized in a very abstract picture it was a picture of the open tomb. And for me, I have a faith and in God. And for me, that was so exciting because it was a picture of the open tomb because Jesus had the last lap, victory over death, victory over sin. And that really ex um, ignited excitement in me. Mm -hmm. And I decided right then and there, that is what I want to do. I want to paint with passion and purpose. And that is my passion and my purpose. So that's, that's where it fabulous. all starts. And the, I get the passion. So the purpose is what? Um, just to use what I paint to uh, draw other people oh. to uh, my God or through circumstances of healing, like that yes. I have through pain, like all just all kinds of life circumstances. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, viewing art is as... Um, is as healing as making art. Yes. I mean, they've done scientific studies to prove that. So that's fascinating. That's wonderful. Really great. Yeah. And how do you think your background shaped you as the artist you are now? I mean, it, you talked about your aha moment, which is fantastic. I love that kind of thing. And I'm also someone who kind of gave up making art for years and years and then kind of got back into it. So 
I'm just interested how how you think your journey has shaped what you're producing now. There was no TV, and so I had to be use my creativity, use my mind in different ways. Yeah. Um, and my friend Jane, I, that is what I wrote for that question, actually. Um, that just something in my mind just drew me back. Yeah. And so I, I feel like we're all created to create in some way. Yes. Um, some people, it's visual art, some people, music, story writing. Um, everybody's been wired and to use their gifts to, for others. That's what exactly. I Exactly. And the, the area and in terms of your purpose and the, the subject matter and the themes of your pieces, those have obviously been um, been modeled after things in your past, right? You're, you're drawing from personal experience and... Yes. And in my pieces, you'll see a lot of movement. I think mm -hmm. the underlying thing of that is um, I, I, a longing to be free. Oh, and I love I, that. I consider myself as an artist, and I'm sure I'm not alone in this, both in arts and in all other things. Fear tends to completely control our lives if yes. we let it. And it's a hard thing to fight, and it, you have to fight it constantly. Yep. And so that desire for freedom, I like free movement and stuff. I think that's all in there that I want to be and free. As an artist, you're courageous, right? I mean, yeah. you're really exposing a side of you, inside of you, and it's out there, right? I think that's really courageous. Yes, and it, a lot of, uh, it's hard to get there. Mm -hmm. A lot of self-doubt creeps in and you have to- Oh yes, that inner so villain. <laughs> <laughs> that inner villain, I know all about that inner villain. Can you think back to maybe an inspirational teacher or, I mean, I like the method that you talk about how you, you know, studied what you wanted to do, which is fascinating. Um, can you think back to like a lesson you learned from a teacher or somebody that, that might have affected you and how you're making art now? Um, one that really stands out to me is actually um, a video course I took during COVID hmm. from artist in Kelowna, BC. Her name is Charlotte Marschalk, and she's a wonderful abstract portrait artist. Hmm. And portraits are never something that I was interested in. Um, I could never draw faces really well when I was younger, uh, but I decided to challenge myself during COVID. And she's a wonderful, wonderful teacher. If anybody wants to check out her co course, it's called Bold School. Bold School, that's interesting. Yes. And so I started trying portraiture and I did very well at it, although I want to be loose and abstract with it um, and very Fabulous. colorful. So um, I have a, I don't know if you can see it here or not. I might have to tip it a bit. I have one that I did of my daughter and her husband. Oh, that's fabulous. Yeah. So it, it, I never finished it because I got to perfectionist. Uh -huh. And um, that wasn't the goal. Yeah. And so I've been practicing and doing different ones to try and get better at that. It takes practice. It does. So, um, I mean, yeah, I totally I agree that perfectionism will kill creativity every time. Yeah. Yeah. Every time. But the thing that really inspired me about that girl, she has lots of inspiration, but she talked one time about um, if somebody gave you a diamond ring. Um, if you think about how long they had to work to earn the money to, to buy that diamond ring, they're trying to tell you how much value you have to them. And you walk around all the time holding your hand over your ring, how painful and hurtful that would be to them. Mm. And her, what inspired me was she said, God has given you a gift. Yes. And if you walk around all the time, ashamed to show it and you don't want to put it out there. You, it's, it's like that diamond ring. He's given you this beautiful thing because he loves you. And you walk around all the time holding it covered up. Yeah. So it's a big thing for me to start branching out. And you know, if, if you talk about how your art serves others, then you're not, you're not serving anyone by hiding it. Exactly. Yeah. 
I love that. I really, I resonate with that for sure. Uh, yes. Could you tell us about the first artwork you ever sold? The first artwork I ever sold, um, again, very textured. It was a picture of a, a large hand. Oh. And yeah, it was, again, it, it was on a, um, after a verse called, um, you are inscribed on the palm of his hand. Oh. And it was just very meaningful to me. And did the person who buy it know you or they were walking past it and spotted it or tell us about that? Uh, well, the person that bought it knew me, but I ordered a canvas of the, like I took a picture of it, ordered a canvas because it's so textured. I was mm -hmm. just very, very curious to see how well the texture would show on a reproduction because I had a lot of people really interested in that picture. Okay. Um, so I did try that. Um, it's not the same as the, I like to feel and touch. You know, people say, don't touch artwork. Well, I want people to touch my artwork. I want them to feel and sense what's in there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like the, yeah. Because it's whatever. a multi sensory thing. I mean, it, you're using your eyes, there's the smell. Is it oil paint that you're using or acrylic? It's acrylic. So acrylic. It's, well, even it has I, a smell. Yeah. But the texture, yeah. for sure. Yeah. I don't believe the oils in your hands are going to ruin it. It's plastic. Yeah. That's my opinion, but yeah, no, I think that's fabulous. And um, do you have any pet peeves? I always like to talk about this because um, everyone has a story, but do you have any pet peeves related to the art world? Um, I have two. Okay. That's good. This, one is the social media. <laughs> it's, it's difficult for me. I'm, from an older generation. So it's harder to put myself out there to think of creative things to, to post and, and do it so often, which I haven't been doing because it's just, I don't want to spend my time thinking and working on that. I want to work on my art. Yep. So that's yeah. one. And the other one is I love all art. And um, often when you, approach a gallery they want to see a series of something so similar mm -hmm. and I'm always wanting to try new things there are similarities if you put a bunch of my pieces together you can see similarities in the texture in the movement and all that but I do not want to stay with same subject stay with you know because yeah. you're um, explorer right you are an explorer yeah. yep yeah which is what I really like about the artists that we choose with Savvy Art. I mean, one of the criteria is that you're pushing your limits. You're trying new things. You're 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 growing as an artist and as a person. And I think yes. that's I find that really exciting. I mean, it yes. excites me. <laughs> We're all so excited when you send new things like, oh, look what Heather did, you know, because yes. it's um, it's just to see that growth and that evolution and where your work takes you. It's it's really exciting to watch. I think. Yes. Yeah. You. And, you know, regarding the social media, both Jasmine and I think you are an expert. So <laughs> if you are not certain about what you're doing, whatever you're doing, just keep doing that because it turns out fantastically. It really Thank does. We, we really like, you know, what you're doing. Tell us what you're currently working on and what you plan to tackle next. Um, so I'm currently working on uh, some portraits to abstract oh. them or become looser, more colorful yeah. and stuff. I have a few things rolling around in my brain uh, that I need to get time to work on, but that's the other, the other element that's hard to get is time. So yep, I get that. work. I do work outside the home. I have eight grandbabies, all my family's, my three daughters live in town. So in the same city. So that's fabulous. What what kind of work do you do? Not artwork, but other work. How do you, how are you all fitting this in? <laughs> I don't. I'm an office manager for okay. my business. Okay. I'm slowly working myself out. I'm down to two days a week. So trying to get more art time. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fantastic. I know. But some, it's, uh, um, then you're outside working and yeah. Yeah, over swimming, so you don't want to miss that either no no I can't imagine and eight that's fantastic so you have three daughters and eight grandchildren yes wow that's outstanding. due in August 
and another one due in August. Look at that. Yeah. So that's a squad. Like you could, you know, do a full on team of something. I know. And every opportunity I get, I'm creating with them and they, it's just so fun. My 12 year old grandson is now, um, doing, he's making knives with, um, he forges his own knives, wow. makes the wood handles, like, like unbelievable work. Yeah. And I've that's incredible. Some very artistic grandchildren. And I'm always trying to encourage that. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, those kind of, um, activities they're so tactile i mean that is incredible development for their brains i think yes yeah so it's like get them off screens and get them creating because it's in there and they're yep. not going to get it on yep. screen and you know i i also do this um uh, program called art spa and part of the program is talking about how art school art at school is just not serving our children at all you know they they're giving them a grade because they colored inside lines, you know, and um, so for you to be able to do that on the side helps yeah. supplement that, you know, and they can they can have confidence in their own creativity, which is outstanding. That will serve them way into the future. Yes, and they love to they love to listen to all the stories. I'll I'll they like to come to my art room and tell me that story again. So it's like, it's oh, putting nice. things in their minds that hopefully they'll carry in their yeah. future. Well, I want to thank you so much. Is there anything else you want to tell us about your art that you want people to know? I think what I would like people to know is I, I love beautiful art and I want beautiful art in homes, but I want it to have meaning and purpose. And my art is created out of um, deep feelings or experiences in life and things that I've worked through in my art. People may not realize that when they purchase a piece, but maybe they're drawn to it for a similar reason. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That's out of my control. Yep. And um, you're right. I mean, as soon as you finish your art, your job is done. That's that my opinion, right? I mean, it's up to the viewer to see uh, what you've done and interpret it with their own experiences and eyes. Yeah, exactly. For yes. sure. I want to thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Oh, it's that's, this is great. great. And we'll do this again. Sounds so, good.